is there a way that we can use virtual reality to teach us to be better fencers? And can we use the latest equipment, even some of the quite cheap equipment, to learn how to use something like this, so the real steel, um, with not much more than something like this? So in this particular video, I'm going to have a look at some of the bits of hardware and software that I've been using, and I'm going to compare it to the the training systems that we use and this kind of sparring that we do uh, and see can virtual reality be used to make you into a decent swordsman. So why, why use virtual reality uh, instead of any of the other ways of being able to practice at home? You know, over the last year, the various schools have found different ways to solve the same kind of problem. So one of them might be the way that we've done it. So we've uh, put up a, a variety of different YouTube videos, uh, both about equipment, uh, about historical weapons, and also on how you can train at home. So there'll be techniques and drills that you can go through. Uh, other people uh, operate sort of Zoom classes, so you can uh, watch your instructors uh, and they can take on either individuals or a small group and you can practice, go through techniques uh, and at least try and get something done until we can all get back to some sense of normality. Um, well, that, that's okay, but is there something else that we can do? Now, before we look at virtual reality, can we just use normal video games? You know, can we use those to try and improve our fencing? Or maybe we've never done any fencing. And you know, can I go and play a game like uh, Hellish Court or or even an old classic 90s sort of sword-based game, can I use that um, to teach me to be a better fencer? Well, the short version really is no. You, know, you can use those games to just sort of see how things are done, to see how people are moving around, and even in something like Hellish Quartz, which actually looks uh, more like um, the reality of a sword fight, uh, by playing that, you know, you're moving joysticks, you're pressing buttons or thumbsticks, uh, you know, you're learning sort of some of the kind of techniques in the back and forth of a fight, but you're not going to learn how to stand, you're not going to learn how to use a sword, how to hold a sword, how to cut, how to thrust, and of course when you put an opponent in front of you, the whole thing transforms. So we need something else. Now, I've been uh, looking at virtual reality for many, many years. My um, uh, sort of first exposure to it was actually in the mid-90s. Uh, back when uh, Sega ran their big centers and they had a variety of uh, pieces of technology that you could experiment with and some of their sort of really early VR stuff was absolutely diabolical. I don't recall who made the hardware and it may have been Sega and of course they did things like the, the G-Lock system which was like a big um, 360 degree rotating sort of pod that you sat in but that's not virtual reality you know you're still seeing uh, a display in front of you. But they did at the same time have a really rudimentary um, sort of VR system. You put the headset on. Um, I don't recall there being anything in the way of um, uh, controls that would sort of mimic the kind of stuff that we have now. And it was truly awful. That's not really going to help us at all. But things have changed. Um, over the last three, four, five years, um, sort of new hardware has been released. Um, and it's also come down in price. So the hardware is getting better. Um, you can put it on your head, you can see a virtual environment, so something a little closer to um, kind of facing off against a person, an instructor or another fencer. And of course you also have these um, new control units that you can use, so new um, handheld controllers depending on which brand you go for. Um, and you can put them, um, attach them to your wrist, there'll be, you know, some of them just detect the actual physical contact on um, effectively on pads on the controllers, others have push buttons on them, but the, almost all of them allow you to move your hands in 3D space, which means that in an actual sort of gaming environment, I could sort of stand in a particular stance, bring my hands up, um, and that will be represented in a game. So with that kind of basic technology, maybe we can go a little bit further. Now I started to experiment with some of the more arcadey type games to see if there was anything of use. Um, and to be honest, um, most of them were not really very helpful. Um, even if you've got a reasonable amount of space, um, so you can move around uh, and sort of go through technique, sort of, I think they call it room space, 
um, where you can effectively walk around in the 3D environment up to a point. Um, but, but even though they incorporated that, they use very rudimentary sort of sword-based systems. So um, one of the first ones I tried, I believe it was called One, I think it's One Must Fall, uh, which is sort of like a fantasy um, rogue type game. Um, and it looks good, and it's a lot of fun, it gives you a good workout. But when you start to play it, you can see that there's a big difference between uh, the reality of a sword fight and what's represented in that particular game. So the first thing, when I went into the game, so I looked down at my hands, which of course, it looks good because your hands are moving around in the virtual environment, so it feels like you're actually there. You can turn around, you can see the virtual environment, um, and as long as you've got enough space, you can even walk around to a certain extent. So that was good. But then when the actual fighting started, uh, really not so great. You know, the, the distance that the creatures would um, sort of position themselves sort of from you, um, was relatively fixed. It's sort of quite a static sort of fight. But it's when the attacks come in, you know, if an attack comes for your head, uh, instinctively, as a fencer, there are certain movements that you go into. Um, for example, you know, if, if kind of the bad guy stepped in with a, and came in with a big powerful cut to the head, I think the first time I tried it, I came straight up into a hanging position, in a hanging guard, to take, you know, the, the impact of the blow away and to deflect it off to the side to follow through with another cut. I just didn't want it. What the game wanted actually was it would show the rough position of the sword. It would sort of flash in, in front of your eyes. And to properly parry, you have to put the sword in almost the exact position. So what tends to happen is while you're fighting, say an attack's coming to the flanks, is rather than something sort of free-flowing, so you might come through and then follow through with a, with a counter-strike, you're just rushing to go, ah, bring the hand here, bring the hand here, bring the hand here. So it's, it's very static, and you're looking at sort of performing these perfect sort of position, or moving into these perfect positions every time. Now again, for, for an actual game, that's quite fun. But the minute you forget it's a game, which happens very easily in VR, um, you, you, everything that you've learned with fencing kind of goes out of the window, because you start playing the game based on their rules. So you'll be standing there, and you'll be saying, oh, I've got to go up there, so I do that. Uh, or I've got to go here, or I've got to go here. And you're looking for the positions they want, rather than naturally moving through um, the cuts and the parries and the displacements and the kind of the body voids moving out of the way. All the stuff that feels natural doesn't really flow very well into the game. So at that point, I was thinking, you know, maybe VR isn't the thing. Maybe it can't offer what I'm looking for. Um, and that's when I moved to the next game, which uh, unfortunately, at the moment, requires a PC. So if you want to play it on a, on a headset uh, like the Oculus Quest that can run independently of a computer, um, you won't currently be able to play um, this particular game on it unless you tether it to a computer. So this particular game is called Blade and Sorcery. Um, so at first glance that sounds like it's, you know, it's going to be a bit naff. You know, why, why bother with it? And when you look it into it more, you'll see that it's actually a sandbox which again, and it's in, um, I, think it's, I think it's in Early Access. Well, those two combined are not always a good thing. Um, but then when you look at it in more detail, you see that they've, they've tried to create something sort of using ragdoll physics. Um, they, they've, they've created a sort of an environment that you can move around in uh, and try to, um, to step, to lunge, to, to avoid, cut and parry, um, as you would want to naturally. So rather than fixed positions for things to work, um, the weapons uh, actually use um, sort of rudimentary physics. So, you know, if a blade is coming towards me and I put my sword in the way and then just push it slightly off to the side, it will displace, it will bring push the blade away. So I don't have to use preset techniques to make it work. So this showed a bit more promise. So you'll see on the footage, when I start the game, um, I'm not... I'm not starting this game with the intention of playing a game and seeing how well I can do. I'm starting this game to see, can I make it reflect kind of the world of fencing? So if I'm not trying to cheat, because with these VR games, there's, all, there's ways to get around uh, the, the basic fighting system. So you can use an awful lot of wrist um, sort of cuts and movements um, very, very quickly with some of the, some, you know, some the two-handed weapons that just won't work in reality. So you can cheat it. But what I did is I went into the game uh, I started off with the basic weapons that you, I think you can start off with um, 
You start off with a single-handed sword, and you've got a dagger that you can... It kind of um, just appears on your body, so you can just draw it, and whenever you like, throw it or fight with it. But I started off the game anyway with these weapons, moved around. I've got quite a bit of space, because I've got this converted garage, so I can move around. It's like a boxing ring. So I've got space to move around. Uh, I've got these weapons, um, and I start experimenting with posture. And I, can, I start straight on, then I move a little bit, so I bring my body around, I bring the hands up, and that's all reflected uh, in the environment. So good so far. I bring the sword up, I look at the sword, it looks pretty good, I look down at my hand, I can twist it around, I can see the hilt, I can see you know, the furniture all around it. That's all looking pretty good. Then the bad guy comes towards me, and the first thing I want to do is, is see what happens when I parry. Is it going to be like the previous game, kind of the fantasy game, um, where everything was so you know, preset and fixed? So the attacks came in, and I went for just simple inside-outside parries. Nothing complicated, it's a sword off to one side, sword off to the other, and it worked every time. Now, of course, in virtual reality, you can't physically stop your arm. Well, I can stop it, but the game can't. So if a sword is pointing towards me and I put my sword there and they make contact, there's nothing that's going to lock my arm in place. But there is a degree of haptic feedback, so you kind of feel when the blades are making contact. And if you push too hard, the blade starts to move, so, so the, the, the strong near your hilt pushes to away from your body, but the tip comes back so it's kind of um, pivoting on their sword while you're still feeling the contact which is a good start so i carried on with this game um, i moved through um, so fighting various different kinds of weapons uh, and, and you can see on the footage it is quite bloody um, so i'll put a warning in that in the uh, description um, you know there are this dismemberment decapitation and lots of blood um, which i i'm having a problem with that i actually found it quite funny but, you know, if, if that's not your thing, I believe you can turn kind of the blood off or reduce it anyway. And I think that um, the dismemberment you can turn off or down as well. But in its basic form, you know, if you come in to have a really powerful blow, you can take off an arm or take off a head. So it's completely up to you what you want to actually do. So I went, I went through this simulation anyway, and I experimented. So I initially just had the one sword. I went to a sword and a dagger. Um, and I found that I could go through most of the basic stuff that I would teach other people. So I could get, I could move into a particular stance. I could, um, I could, uh, I could step back to avoid attack. I could void to the sides. Uh, I could take a parry. Sort of, uh, I could take a parry with a sort of uh, take a cut, I should say, and a hanging parry and cut straight through. Um, I could com void completely, move out of the way, and deliver a strike. And the really nice thing is because it's using a physics-based system, if you interrupt an attack, so for example, they're cutting towards you and you void out of the way of the attack and then cut down into their arm, you'll stop the attack if it's a significant enough blow. So let's take, say you took the hand off, that attack is gone. But if you hit it hard enough, not even to take the hand off, but just to effectively stop the attack, it didn't go any further. Uh, and that's when I realized that that there's actually some potential to this. Okay, so the fighting's continuing. I'm going through the different types of weapons. I move to a sword and shield. Uh, so you can hold it, you can basically pick it up from the floor, um, hold it in a punch grip in front of you, and then you can move it around, you can hold it wherever you like. If you get the two, you know, the sword and the buckler or sword and shield entangled, you'll get a bit messed up, so you need to keep them a little bit separated. If they make contact, that haptic feedback um, comes back through the controllers, so you can sort of feel that something is going on. Uh, and I experimented with that. So I went in. Um, at one point, it got a little bit confusing. It was my first time in the actual game, and there's a magic system built in, which doesn't interest me at all. But I kept activating it when I was trying to do some kind of melee thing. So you'll see these kind of weird things come out, like runes on the screen, and I assume you've got to do a particular pattern to activate them. Uh, so that, that, that didn't interest me. But what did interest me was when my opponent got too close and I wasn't you know, quite sure how well it would work with the sword at close range, I could punch them with a the buckler. I could punch them with my hands. I could lock the buckler around them, pin them in position, and then hit them with my sword or punch them. And all of that worked in the game. Um, I was able to pin them in place and take off their head or slash them in the throat. Now, so 
I had lots of options that I could do in the game um, that I wasn't expecting. So rather than thinking about, you know, what are the kind of the preset techniques, you know, do I have to pull the stick backwards and press, uh, you know, a couple of buttons in sequence? No, I could actually fight the way I wanted to fight and not think about it. So I could do any kind of cuts. I could do lots of short, very quick cuts. I could go through some of the cutting drills that we practice with the uh, British military swordsmanship. So I could go through the cutting, you know, the cutting diagram. I could do some of the um, uh, rotational sort of strikes from Maya. Uh, I could do pretty much anything I wanted. So will VR make you a better swordsman? Well, if you don't have anybody to practice with, so let's say you're starting completely from scratch, well, then, then you can play these sort of VR games and VR simulations, and you'll get you'll get a kind of you know you'll you'll get something of an idea of what a sword fight is like. Um, you know, you can go through the basic mechanics, and you can you know have a bit of to and fro between you and your opponent. But if you haven't already had some kind of basic training, you're going to find that the way you fight is is basically modified and adjusted by the game itself. So as I said earlier, you can cheat. No, not because you're trying to sort of, you know, sort of bypass rules or something, but you can, you can do the minimum that's needed for the actual software to accept so that you can get your hits and to get your parries and bits in. But if you've done some basic training before, even just um, in, a, in maybe a year of fencing or something and you want to get better, um, then it's, I, I think you could say it's an, it could be a really, really good tool. Um, if, you, if you're effectively forcing the rules onto yourself, so you say, I'm going to fight this virtual opponent the way I would fight somebody um, sort of at my fencing school. If, if you treat it like that, so you're, you're not sort of trying to sort of find any kind of workarounds, uh, it actually works really well. You know, you can move around your opponent, you can deliver a whole barrage of techniques um, other than sort of things with the lower body. So you can't sort of use the knee and the feet effectively. Um, without using the controllers, because there's nothing attached to the lower body. You've just got, you know, some kind of um, controllers um, for the hands, um, and then the headset. So, but obviously as, th as things develop, so you start getting this kind of thing on your knees and your feet, so you're sort of doing more of a full body tracking, uh, and as you include um, full body sort of haptic feedback, um, all of which is either available or in development, then, you, then you're going to be able to sort of become sort of more fully invested um, and sort of become part of the kind of the fight that you're taking part in. Now, in terms of equipment, what do you need if you, you know, if you want to give this sort of a try? Well, the, the absolute cheapest way of getting started at the moment is to go with something made by Oculus. Ideally, one of the Oculus Quest uh, range at the moment. That's the Quest or the Quest 2. Um, these controllers are from the uh, Quest 2. Uh, and the headset, I'll just vanish a moment. The sort of the Oculus headset, so you can see it there, um, is, is basically the cheapest entry point at the moment for VR. Uh, I believe they're either 200 or 250 pounds at the moment. I'm pretty sure that's the price anyway. Um, and for that price, you get the the basic headset and two of these controllers, and that will allow you to sort of get started in sort of kind of the world of VR fighting. Now, if you wanted to play something like that blade and sorcery game that I was just demonstrating you will have to connect it up to a PC. Uh, and to do that, um, you'll see on the Oculus Quest, there's um, a USB-C port. Uh, let's see, yes, USB-C port. Let's see it there. So you connect that by, uh, via a USB cable to your PC. So you don't need to connect it directly to the graphics card. It goes straight to the USB port on your computer and it needs to be at least USB, um, yeah, USB 2, um, ideally 3. Um, to sort of get enough sort of data throughput to, uh, to actually make it work properly. And then you run the game on your desktop PC um, and then and use this equipment to do it. Um, there are other, other headsets that you can get. You can buy the, um, the Oculus Rift or the Rift S, which is the one I had before this. I'm just going to put this down a moment. Um, so you can get something like the Oculus, um, Oculus Rift or Rift S. Um, they're sort of out of production now, and that eventually, it won't be too far from now, they're not going to be supported. So they're fine at the moment, and in many ways, they're, especially the Rift S is a much more comfortable headset. But it's only designed for playing tethered games, so it's got to be connected to a computer at all times. 
Whereas something like the Quest or the Quest 2, you can uh, you don't need to connect it to a computer for most of the things you're doing. Um, it's got its own built-in battery, uh, so you can sort of run around a room with no wires whatsoever. Now, if you want to be able to play with, say, something like the Quest, and you want to play that sort of Blade and Sorcery or similar games, so these higher performance games, um, there are a couple of workarounds. Um, I, I won't go into detail here because that, that's not really the place, but there is software you can install on your PC um, that would allow you to run PC games um, like Blade and Sorcery uh, or things like Half-Life Alex, which obviously isn't a fencing game, but it's, it's a game that requires quite a bit of power to play. Um, and it allows you to then um, connect to your Oculus hardware um, over the Wi-Fi, um, which does work as long as your router is, is fast enough, then that will um, that, that would be one way of doing it. Or you can just wait. You know, the Oculus Quest 3 is already in development, as is the Quest 4. Um, it's not going to be long before something like Blade and Sorcery is ported directly to the Quest, in which case you can, you know, you can go around your open space, you know, living room, kitchen or garage, um, and you can play this kind of game on your own. So, so in summary, what, what do I think of sort of virtual reality in terms of, in terms of fencing? Um, it, it's obviously not a replacement for um, fighting an actual person. Um, and there is, n there is no better way to learn how to fence than to have uh, an experienced fencing instructor in front of you that can sort of look at what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. They can correct and improve the things you're doing. And you can actually, you know, physically engage with them uh, in the practice. So blade on blade contact does not feel the same in reality as it does in VR. It's very, very different. Um, also things like um, depth perception and, and movement. Um, in some ways it's much more subtle and in other ways it's much faster in real life um, than it is in VR. Uh, in VR it tends to be much more static where you take sort of steps in sort of forwards, backwards, left or right as you're moving around but you don't have sort of more complex footwork. Um, you don't have to respond quite as quickly as you would to, uh, to a human. So I would definitely give it a try. Um, if you want to do it on the cheap, you know, and you've got a, you've already got a gaming PC, then get a Quest, a Quest Two, because you know they are just really cheap at the moment. Connect it with the USB cable and just get started. Um, if you don't want to connect it to a computer or you don't have a computer powerful enough, there are other games that you can play, um, and there are new games coming out all of the time. But I haven't come across one yet um, that has the sort of the same kind of ragdoll physics. Um, sort of system that's being used in um, uh, Sword and whatever it's called. I've, I've forgotten the name already. Yes, Blade and Sorcery. I had to go and pause and check for a moment because I had already forgotten, even though I've been talking about it for the last however many minutes. So go and check it out. If you happen to know any games on the Quest or the Quest 2 that are similar, so that allow you to actually perform sort of correct sort of fencing techniques, um, comment in the um, well, put, put a message in the comments below so I can check it out and if it looks half decent I'll record another video um, and you know, we'll see where it goes but the short version is yes you can use VR to to practice and improve your fencing and if you really had to as a push you could be, be sort of you could make yourself competent as a swordsman just through using virtual reality I'm not saying it will actually make you you know decent but if you practiced on it, if you were using it every night, and instead of using, say, something like Beat Saber and playing rhythm games, if you were just concentrating on sword-based games um, and working on your, you know, your footwork and your, your cuts and your parries, and, and maybe doing a bit, bit of extra research as well, go and watch some videos on YouTube, um, go through some tutorials, maybe attend a few Zoom classes as well with some of the really great instructors around the world. Um, so sort of go and do all of that, and then go back and try it out in VR. And at the very least, you're going to have some fun and you might even, you know, improve some of your techniques as well. So go and check it out. Any questions, um, you know, as I said, just drop a message in the comment section. Uh, I'll do my best to reply to all of them. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.